I think the U.S.'s basic interest is to maintain the status quo. I think that's probably true under either a Republican or Democratic administration. The Republican administration has uh, shifted the nuances of the relationship in the sense that their attitude is much more pro-Taiwan, has been much more pro-Taiwan up until the election is pro, more pro-Taiwan than the uh, Clinton administration, which was perceived to be leaning more. So it's a question of leaning. One leans one way and one leans the other way. But the basic attitude is, 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 is the same, which is that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, the United States, wants to be friends and on good terms with both Taiwan and the PRC and uh, wants to maintain the status quo. They want, want them to have good relations with one another, good economic relations, good trade relations, and so forth. Uh, they don't want uh, Taiwan to be invaded uh, violently. They want, if they, uh, if they reunify, uh, they want that to be peaceful. So that's the bottom line. That's the basic American policy. Now, there's some question, uh, would the Americans be in favor of reunification if it were to occur, you know, even on American terms, that is, peacefully? And there's disagreement about that. Some people say, well, we don't really care. Some, people, some other people say, well, we would be opposed to it because it wouldn't be in our strategic interest. So that is disagreement on that. But uh, It's not in the U.S.'s uh, strategic interest for, for Taiwan to be re re reunified with the mainland. Um, is it, why is that? Well, it would strengthen the PRC. It would strengthen the PRC. There would be a stronger competitor in the United States. They see the United States as a possible uh, competitor with the PRC in the future, the PRC emerging as a major power in East Asia which would challenge the United States' uh, dominant position in the, in the Asian region. And so if they were to reunify with Taiwan, that uh, would strengthen the PRC considerably uh, because Taiwan is uh, a major in economic industrial power. Uh, it, would, it would strengthen their GDP, for example, by uh, oh, several percentage points. Uh, all of a sudden, their GDP would spring up by maybe 30, 20, 30 percent. And, uh, and so forth. Their, their technological advancement would uh, accelerate uh, very rapidly, too. That's part of the reasons that the PRC wants to reunify with Taiwan, I think. It's an economic uh, dynamo. It's, it's, very, it's, it's technologically advanced. It's uh, got a strong industry and so forth. It would be a very, very attractive acquisition from that program. Well, I think that probably in the Bush administration there are people who think that way, yeah. I think they're probably now, I'm, 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 I'm saying that there are two points of view. One is that we don't really care. I think that's the official position, is that we don't really care. I think it's probably the Clinton administration position. We don't really care uh, whether they unify or reunify or not, as long as it's peaceful. And the other position is that, well, we really do care. We would really prefer that Taiwan remain part uh, an independent country, but we won't fight to, we won't, uh, we won't, uh, we won't try to prevent them from unify if they do so voluntarily and without violence. Now, I think probably the Bush administration is more the second camp, that they think they would really prefer not that they not reunify, and that the Democrats or the Clinton administration was probably the other way, that they really didn't care as long as it was peaceful. Well, I've, from what I've heard, the uh, Kerry people, uh, which is the, uh, he's the all but uh, certain nominee of the Democratic Party, are uh, r relatively more friendly to the PRC this position, so it could change. Uh, the Bush administration has been unusually sympathetic to Taiwan in the last four years and uh, probably would continue to be, although they, they've lurched away from that position in the last election. They thought that, uh, uh, they thought that Chen Shui-bian needless, needlessly sort of jeopardized American uh, commitments by uh, provoking the PRC, unnecessarily provoking the PRC for his own political gain to strengthen his own electoral campaign. So there was a certain amount of uh, bad feeling and, 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 and uh, resentment of the Bush administration and, and of course, Bush in November of, of 2003 uh, publicly uh, uh, repudiated the uh, Chen Shui-bian claim that the, uh, uh, that the referendum would be a good thing and they, 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 they basically said publicly that uh, they didn't want uh, Chen Shui-bian to unnecessarily provoke the PRC in, in, in this referendum thing. Basically, because the PRC did. Uh, Chen Shui, uh, you know, Wen Jiabao came to Washington, and uh, for the first time, uh, the PRC tried a new tack on Taiwan. They didn't, they didn't try to talk with Taiwan. They didn't try to open negotiations, uh, but they did. They tried to avoid threatening Taiwan in an overt fashion because they realized that threatening Taiwan just contributed to 
the strengthening of the independence forces in Taiwan. And they tried a different tack, which is to go to the United States and get the United States to uh, try to persuade Taiwan not to do this. Because uh, the, basically the PRC's position is that a referendum is a step towards independence. Uh, it's a conspiracy theory, you can say, but that's their position. Uh, if they have a referendum on this issue, they'll have another referendum on this other issue, which is a question of independence or how uh, they'll, they'll approve the Constitution through a referendum or they'll use the referendum to, in their pursuit of independence. So they didn't, were in, opposed to a referendum. But they didn't, try, they didn't use overt threats as much as they have in the past. As in 2000, for example, uh, Zhu Yongji's statement or the, uh, of course, the most notorious case was in 1995-1996. Uh, the Straits crisis when they were shooting missiles across the strait in the, the 20, 30 miles uh, of, within 20, 30 miles of Taiwanese ports. So they didn't try to do that because they realized it backfired on them in the past and they went to the United States and tried to get the United States to persuade Chen shui bian not to be so provocative. Yeah, but it didn't work, obviously. Uh, George W. Bush made his statement and uh, Chen shui bian uh, took it under advisement but didn't change his policy. He continued to have his referendum which he lost. Well, there's, the Republican Party, I think, right now is split. I mean, there are a lot of sympathizers with the Chen Shui-bian, with the DPP, with the Green Camp. In fact, I think the, the sort of core, the, the, the core of the Republican Party is, is pro-DPP. Uh, they, 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 they don't trust the PRC. They share that uh, feeling with uh, Chen Shui-bian. Chen Shui-bian basically doesn't trust the PRC. So, uh, there's a lot of support for Chen shui bian in, in the Republican Party. But George W. Bush is, uh, has to run a foreign policy uh, that uh, takes care of American interests. And the uh, PRC is a much bigger country, a much more important country strategically for the United States. Uh, they can control the situation to some extent in the Korean uh, Peninsula, uh, the nuclear possibility of nuclear development of uh, bombs and so forth in North Korea. And so they're uh, uh, Bush has to take that into account. He has to. He has to. He, he doesn't want any. He doesn't want an explosion in the Taiwan Straits. And he thinks that if Chen Shui Bian provokes the PRC sufficiently, there will be an explosion in which he will be obliged to come into the support of the uh, of the Taiwan. And he would probably do that, but he would probably prefer not to do that when we're uh, already engaged in Iraq and probably don't have that many troops left to engage somewhere else. Well, that's true. So, uh, if they're upset with Bush on that, uh, for that, in that respect, they're probably they probably join a lot of another other Americans who are upset with Bush for invading Iraq for other various other reasons. So, there is obviously uh, the support for Bush's invasion of Iraq now now is is, is declining. It's, it's it's quite low and it's declining uh, because of various unexpected problems that have come come to the surface in the context of this invasion, mostly after the successful invasion, after the invasion succeeded, uh, there was no way to consolidate the American position there. There was no way to, uh, the nation building effort in Iraq has, uh, has run aground. It's uh, seriously, uh, got serious problems right now. And so a lot of people are upset with him uh, on that. Well, I don't think they're policy. looking at from the, uh Taiwan's yeah, they're perspective. They're looking from the Taiwan perspective. Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it has taken pressure off of China. People, some, some, some people have speculated this would be the China's golden chance to invade Taiwan because the, the, the Americans are preoccupied in uh, Iraq. They can't spare the troops. Uh, this is their great uh, opportunity. Yeah, the uni yeah uh, basically, yes. And the, the China has helped to put together the six-party talks uh, on, on, on the North Korean uh, weapons question, and uh, they have been the ones to get the North Koreans to come to the table. Uh, so uh, this is the only channel we have uh, at present for discussing this question. And uh, the Chinese have been very, very important in, in setting this up. Yeah, they seem to be coordinating. I mean, they don't have complete, uh, complete uh, they don't see eye to eye on all issues, of course, I think. The United States would like to apply sanctions to North Korea, and China is basically opposed to that. Uh, but they, they are in agreement that uh, they both agree that uh, it would be best for North Korea to give up the bomb uh, and to re-enter the non-proliferation treaty. So it's, uh, it's a question of hard and soft tactics in trying to induce them to do that. That is the agreement uh, that, there, that there should be no proliferation from the existing 
uh, weapon, nuclear weapon states. There are five uh, official nuclear weapon states in the world, um, and uh, the non-proliferation treaty is that, that it should not uh, proliferate beyond that to other, to other weapons, to other countries. Well, the Bush administration's position is that they don't want to have one-on-one -on -one negotiations. That's actually been the North Korean preference, that they wouldn't want to have one-on-one -on -one negotiations with the United States. Uh, but the Bush administration's position is that they want to have multilateral. This is quite uncharacteristic for the Bush administration, which has been accused of being unilateralist in many of its foreign policy initiatives. But on North Korea, they prefer to have, excuse me, they, in North Korea, they prefer to have uh, uh, multilateral negotiations. Uh, they, I, I think that they, this is a speculation, but I think that they are afraid that uh, if they have one-on-one -on -one negotiations, that the North Koreans will hit them up for all sorts of aid and so forth as, uh, as part of what they see as a blackmail scheme. Uh, you, we give up the bomb, you give us X, Y, Z. And so they would prefer to have it in multilateral context or a multilateral form. But exactly what reasons they have for this, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, they don't want to have one-on-one -on -one negotiations with North Korea. They prefer to have it in a multilateral forum, and China's been helpful in setting that up. Well, China's uh, interests are also involved, because if, uh, if North Korea is uh, permitted to have a bomb, it, it officially becomes a nuclear weapon state, uh, then that would, be, uh, that would perhaps lead to uh, the argument that Japan could have a bomb, which China does not want, definitely, or even that South Korea could have a bomb. Uh, so you'd have a sudden situation in which, from no nuclear weapon state, you'd have three or four in this Northeast Asian region. Uh, whereas at present you just have one, which is China, China and the United States, the only one that could, and the Soviet Union, of course. But and the U.S. is opposed to uh, further nations having okay. nuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah, it's been a very strong. That's, of course, as you remember, that was one of the reasons that we invaded Iraq. This because they alleged that there was a nuclear weapons program in Iraq. So they've been very, very concerned about other states uh, acquiring weapons of mass destruction, especially states that don't like the United States. <laughs> Well, they've been fairly, uh, fairly low-key. Uh, actually, what's happened in most recent days is that they've uh, offered to resume the talk. And so uh, maybe the Chen Shui-bian position, which is that they would ultimately have to uh, resume negotiations with him if he's re-elected, maybe that's correct. Uh, there have been signals from the PRC that they're willing to resume negotiations with, uh, with, the, uh, with the Taiwan government. No, I wouldn't say it's improved, but that they've uh, reconciled themselves with the reality that they've uh, made, that the PRC has uh, finally uh, decided to accept reality, negotiate. They, they would certainly prefer uh, a blue administration, uh, but uh, I think they're probably, they signal that they'd be willing to talk with a green administration, I think. How far they'll get, we'll have to see. There are a lot of problems to be worked out, but it's possible. I, I can see the possibility of, of talks resuming with the uh, with Taiwan across the straits. Well, with the at the election at the time of the election and immediately afterwards, I thought it was I was very very pessimistic about the possibility of any sort of anything happening because uh, Chen Shui Bian granted three interviews after the election with the Washington Post and uh, other media outlets in which he took a rather, uh, uh, a rather uh, pugnacious, I would say, uh, line and uh, sort of, uh, we're going to do such and such and, you know, uh, and, uh, and, and they, they should just mind their own business, basically. Uh, so it looked like a pretty, that they were going to pr proceed with the um, Constitution, with forming a Constitution by 1986 and passing it by 1988, as is announced before that he planned to do, and that uh, uh, this looked like it was uh, going to provoke a lot of uh, questions uh, from the mainland side. Uh, uh, he subsequently made clear that he wants to have, however, a constitution, but that the constitution would not change the flag or the name of the country or these other things that the uh, PRC uh, deems essential uh, to uh, that there should be no sort of constitutional declaration that uh, Taiwan is a separate state. Now, whether he uh, changes the way of representing Taiwan, uh, declares that Taiwan is only responsible for the uh, island of Taiwan and the offshore islands, that would also be considered by PRC a very sensitive issue. They would they would oppose that as well. 
So we'll have to see how this unfolds, how he, what, how exactly how he, what sort of constitutional, uh, new constitution he's going to come up with. It's a whole, uh, the whole, the whole thing is wide open because, because he's not going to just amend the constitution as it's been done several times in the past, three or four times in the past. He wants to come up with an entirely new constitution. So it's a whole, um, uh, there's a, a lot to be uh, revealed about what's going to happen there. So I was pessimistic at first, but uh, subsequently it looks as if the PRC is going to, uh, he's toned down his rhetoric somewhat, I mean under strong pressure from foreign, foreign uh, observers, I think mostly, he's toned down his rhetoric and uh, tried to reassure the people that he was not going to push for immediate Taiwan independence or independent, Taiwan independence within maybe the next four years. And uh, the PRC has made uh, overtures suggesting that they would be willing to talk with Taiwan under certain circumstances. Cir certain circumstances. So there is, uh, I am not, uh, whereas immediately after the election I was quite pessimistic, I'm now uh, a bit more uh, cautiously optimistic about the possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, things could work out. I mean, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be, uh, really um, sweetness and light and so forth across the strait. I, 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 it's going to be difficult, uh, probably because there's not much trust. Uh, the PRC has made it clear that they don't trust Chan, uh, that they think that he started off in 2000 with a lot of conciliatory statements and then, uh, t then as, as times, time went on, he made provocative statements. And uh, he saw his interest in provoking the PRC and using him to sort of stir up his own core constituency and maximi maximizing his votes. So they don't trust him. They think he's a, a smart politician who will uh, do anything to get elected, basically. Uh, so I think it'll be, it'll be a rough road, but uh, if, if there's any luck, uh, there will be a resumption of negotiations. And at the very best, we could hope for perhaps uh, some movement on the three links, the Santong. That would be the most, most, most optimistic outcome if, that, if there were some, if, there, if that were to be accomplished, the three, if they were to accept the three links. Well, it's a proposal made by Chen Shui-bian himself. He promised in 2000 that he would bring about the two link, three links. Well, they seem to move away from it, but I think, uh, as I understood it in the 2000 election, he said he would bring about the three links because he has a lot of business backers. He, d he does have business backers as well as, uh, as uh, labor. And uh, the business people have been very much in favor of bringing about the three links. Uh, they would, it would greatly reduce their costs. It would uh, facilitate their e the economic uh, relations with the PRC and so forth. Uh, it's, a, it's a story that should be, uh, that we re really remains to be told. I'd like to see a good article on that. Uh, it seemed to be uh, that the, <laughs> it seemed to be the, a good shot. I mean, he seemed to have a good chance of doing it. Uh, but then, uh, especially after they both countries got into the WTO at the end of 2001 and uh, beginning of 2002. Both, both countries were accepted in the WTO, so that seemed to be, provide a good forum for them to, to resolve the three links issue. Uh, there was a lot of support for it in Taiwan among the business community, and certainly the PRC said that they would uh, uh, support it under certain circumstances, although they would demand that, the, that Taiwan do such a certain things, such as accept the one China principle and so forth. Uh, so th there seemed to be a chance that they would do it, but part of the reason I think is that uh, Taiwan refused to accept the One China Principle even with the 1992 compromise. So uh, there's uh, the DPP seemed to be signaling that they were not interested in negotiation, uh, even under this sort of uh, compromise agreement that had been reached in the past between the uh, KMT and the, and the, and the, and the PRC. Um, what was the 1992? Well, it was basically a formula that allowed them to uh, talk in Singapore. They have the Singapore talks in 1993 and 1994, uh, which was Iga uh, Jungo uh, Gudzu uh, One China, different interpretations. Uh, I think on the Taiwan side, uh, this was. Uh, uh, made explicit, and on the PRC side, they didn't even say it, but that they allowed the Taiwan side to say it, but they, they made clear that they would not uh, agree to it in other international forums. Anyway, 
they that was the basic 1992 for, uh, compromise. That they would they both believed in one China, but their interpretation of what that one China was was different. So this is this compromise is more about rhetoric than, than you It's know? it's a way of permitting them to talk basically. I mean, the China insists as a principle that uh, Taiwan agree to the one China principle as a condition for negotiation. And so Taiwan uh, uh, got them to agree to this uh, compromise, which is, we, okay, we both agree with one China principle, but we both we disagree about who, who the one China is or what, what one China is, what one China is about. If they were to make it, yeah, but yeah. I think it would, help, it would facilitate uh, negotiation across the street. But they do require that Taiwan accept the one China principle. Is there only one China in the world? What would accepting that condition uh, involve? Well, they, not much. I mean, uh, especially if you accept the compromise. Uh, we accept that there's one China, but we just don't agree on what it is. Uh, but it would, the DPP's position is that if you accept it, uh, then you've already placed yourself in, a, uh, in an inferior position. Because uh, although China's backed away from the position that the one China is the PRC, Basically, that's the way the world understands the one China is the, the one China is the PRC. So, that by accepting that, you've already accepted that uh, China is uh, is the only China, and that they are, uh, and that we are only a part of it. So, it places us in a disadvantage, disadvantageous negotiating position from the outset. So, we don't want to accept it. That's the DPP position. They, they don't want to. Accept, that's why they don't want to accept it, even with the with the compromise. Now, I think Li Dong Hui did come to that conclusion, especially after the 95, 96 uh, crisis. I don't think that he was interested in negotiation anymore. After the Gu Fu visit, I think that's not true of all people in Taiwan. Though I think Gu Fu was in favor of uh, maintaining some more uh, some sort of relationship across the strait. He made his own personal visit there in 1998. And uh, there was arrangements for a reciprocal visit by, uh, by his counterpart. Uh, uh, but this never came to pass because uh, Li Donghui uh, torpedoed it by coming out with the Liang Guolun statement in, 19, in the spring of 1999. And uh, so Wang Daohan never came to Taiwan as he was, uh, he, uh, he was scheduled to do because Li Donghui blew that out of the water. Because he didn't want to, he didn't want to talk with the PRC. He didn't want to resume negotiations. Because, as you said, he he decided that there wasn't much point. Did he do it? He did it. He definitely did it. He made it impossible for Wang Daohan to come by making a statement about Liang Guolun. And remember when he made that statement to the Deutsche Welle uh, TV uh, interviewer that there is. Uh, China and Taiwan are both two countries, two separate countries with a special relationship between them. That was in the spring of 1999. And that was coming very, very close to saying that Taiwan is independent, an independent country. And he's also said that, that Taiwan is a sovereign and independent country. So uh, by saying that, uh, the PRC uh, was not going to permit Wang Dohan to come to Taiwan in those circumstances. And it's clear from his memoirs, from Li Dongwei's memoirs, that he was quite deliberate in doing that because he didn't want Wang Dahan to come to, to, to Taiwan. So he, 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 he blew, blew up the uh, chance to resume negotiations, and he did it deliberately, I think. Uh, you'd have to read his memoirs to, explain, to find out exactly what his reasoning was, why, why he gave up the, uh, the ch chance to resume talks. Uh, but, he, but I think that was really the basic underlying uh, feeling was that if we, if we talk, then we're moving towards uh, some sort of reunification sort of arrangement. And he didn't want to do that. To, he, he would like to have some su business support, obviously. It's very useful to have business support if you're a politician. Maybe they don't have that many votes, but they have money. Uh, so it's useful to have business support. And there were a, a number of business people who did support him in 2000. So. Um, and there were in, in 2004, too, uh, there were some business people who supported it. So uh, obviously, if he can appeal to them, uh, he would prefer to do that. But uh, on the other hand, uh, it does mean that you have to negotiate it. You can't have uh, the uh, three links without negotiation. You have to negotiate it. And if you negotiate it, uh, the PRC is going to demand a price. I mean, that's just 
you just have to take that into, into, in, in, the, in the bargain. If, uh, the PRC is, of course, going to demand some pr price for negotiating. So uh, he wasn't w willing to pay that price. Yeah, but I don't think if they do that they're going to get the three links. And I think that uh, that's going to hurt them in, in the long run if they don't have the three links. I mean, I think there's going to be increasing trade in Taiwan, uh, China. If, continue, if China continues to grow the past, at, the, at, the, at the pace that it's been growing in the last several years, it's going to attract increasing money. It's going to be the center of gravity, economically speaking, in, the, in that area. And for Taiwan to, uh, to continue to enjoy the prosperity, the spin-off prosperity from that, they, should, they have to get economically close to the PRC. They have to use that. And so the three links are very, very important to Taiwan, actually, in the long run, to make that economic relationship even more profitable. Uh, so um, definitely, I think that it would be in Taiwan's economic interest uh, to, to have the three links. Now, Taiwan's doing okay. I mean, they're, they're recovering finally from their long, uh, from the recession. It was probably, I think, the most serious recession they've had since World War II, uh, beginning in 2000. They, they seem to be coming back now. What's the growth rate this year? About 3% 3, 3 maybe?